The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi there and welcome from Studio 27 in Sacramento, California, and from our other panelists across the U.S. to today's webinar, How Greater New Orleans is Stimulating the Economy with Geospatial Apps, sponsored by ESRI and hosted by Directions Media, the voice of all things location. Hi, I'm Mike Agron the executive webinar producer with Directions Media, and I'm going to be your moderator and one of your hosts for today's session. We've invited you along with other executives, managers, and operational line professionals who are involved in economic development or retail network management, and others as well who really need to develop applications with access to location-specific demographics and available properties. So what we thought today would be a lot more engaging if we took this topic and had a panel of experts discuss with you what you need to know about making critical demographic and business decisions using web apps, that we brought a panel of three experts together, and they're going to share their insights, their best practices, and lessons learned from their collective experiences in these areas. And you can see their names on the uh, splash screen right now, and I'll get to introduce them in just a moment. But what we want you to know is that today is not about theories or strategies. This is about real-life example of what these gentlemen have done and how they were able to help the greater city of New Orleans do some pretty remarkable things with ESRI Business Analyst Online API, as well as some other things. Now, you're also going to have an opportunity to have your questions answered at the end of our panel discussion during our Ask the Expert session. But for now, let's get started as we have quite a bit of information to cover. We mentioned the type of uh, audience that we invited, and we're delighted that we have a true global audience. More than 500 of you have registered from over 20 different countries, and you represent a very, very diverse cross-section of industries. And we're absolutely confident that uh, our goal of you finding value in today's session will be achieved, regardless of the industry or your affiliation. So. Let's get started and take a look at how we want to frame our, our, our discussion today. And, you know, it's really around the invitation that we use to invite you to today. It, it's about information sharing, which absolutely is mandatory in the business world today. And because more and more organizations are making critical demographic and business information available to the public through custom web apps, People want access and need access to this so they can address key issues as to where to locate a new business or office or how a public works project will impact the surrounding areas. So there's three things that we want to cover uh, with our panel today. The first is business results. How did the greater city of New Orleans new site intelligence tool bring profitable business to the area? You'll hear from Matt Rookard in just a moment who's got some very interesting stories to tell about that. Then. Accessing data. How can you use ESRI Business Analyst Online, the API, and how can you use this tool incorporating accurate demographic and business data into powerful web apps and pulling it all together as the development of the solutions? So how did ESRI, how did MSF Global and Greater New Orleans collaborate on these capabilities? And the agenda that we've put together is going to cover that. I'll give the introduction, and in just a moment we're going to hear uh, from Joe Francica. But what we'd like to know right now, before we go into that, is are you already using demographic data to make location decisions? So I just launched a poll, and that poll should be up on your screen. If you would just choose one, yes, no, don't know, I'll uh, let folks uh, vote, then we'll share the results, and we'll see how many of you are already using demographic data. Looks like 63% of you said yes, you're already using demographic data to make location decisions. 29% no, and 7% aren't sure. Well, that's great. We, uh, we absolutely hope that what you learned today will give you some encouragement to consider looking at how you can use demographic data. This is a part of the webinar that I always look forward to, which is to bring on Joe Francica. Uh, Joe is the vice publisher of Directions Media, and I'm sure most of you in the audience are familiar with Joe. Uh, he's been the vice publisher of Directions for 10 years, and he's been pretty much the voice of all things location to the industry for that amount of time. So, Joe, tell us uh, where you're calling in from and how things are going uh, over there. 
Thanks, Mike, and uh, calling in from lovely steamy Huntsville, Alabama today. And uh, on behalf of my staff, I want to extend my thanks to all of you for taking the time to attend today's webinar. And I'm pretty excited about uh, the topic we have today and the applications that are going to be presented. As you know, I've been involved with the applications of geospatial technology for business applications since 1989, so I, I love to talk about this stuff. You know, classically, GIS has been used to improve what I would call the intestinal fortitude method or gut feel for real estate and retail site selection. You know, it used to be used by many brokers in the past, and now it's certainly more analytical and, and the methodology is much improved. And while the applications for site selection and demographic analysis have certainly improved, what's even better is the ability to have easy access to data and the ability to share the results of analyses with more people. As a result, the ability to avoid mistakes related to opening a retail establishment in the wrong place can be avoided because you know once you pour concrete in the ground, it's pretty difficult to move it. What you're going to hear today are some classic examples of how the tools were used to best uh, foster retail site selection and economic development. And it should be noted that while some of the analyses are similar, the audience looking at the geospatial information may be different. So it's really important to have, visual, uh, have a visualization and analysis platform with the flexibility to address the concerns of a variety of stakeholders. So I hope you enjoy today's great case, great case study from Greater New Orleans, Inc. and MSF Global and presented by Esri. So thanks again for attending. Mike, I'll turn it back to you and let's get rolling. Thanks, Joe, and uh, keep your air conditioning thermostat on so you uh, will be able to join us at the end of the Ask the Experts panel, okay? You bet. All right. So the panel that we have consists of James Kellick, who's the lead product manager for ESRI Business Analyst. And uh, he joined ESRI in 2004 as the product manager of ESRI Arc Web Services and in 2008 took over product management of ESRI Business Analyst. He's had a, a long career in geospatial. I know he was at MapQuest and he's done a lot of interesting things. And then joining uh, the panel is Marseus Fernandez, and, and Marseus is the president and CEO of MSF Global Solutions. Um, they are a New Orleans-based company, and they specialize in GIS and geospatial content. He's got over 15 years' experience, and he's very, very passionate about the use of geospatial and solving business problems. And then we have Matt Rookert, who's the vice president of business development for the Greater New Orleans Incorporated. And he is in charge of the Regional Economic Development Alliance that uh, serves southeastern Louisiana. And he's responsible for the implementation of products that increase the technical capacity within the organization. And he's always looking at how do you assess potential economic impacts of projects and recruiting companies to the region. So really, you'll hear how ESRI and MSF Global rallied to support the vision and the business objectives of Greater City of New Orleans. So it's, it's great to have you here, and I know we're going to be uh, speaking with you in just a moment. But let's start with you, James. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you, Mike. Good. Well, we're delighted to have you. And um, what I'd like you to do is to talk about to the audience what were some of the drivers for creating Business Analyst Online API and anything else you want to share on that. And then we're going to bring Matt and Marseilles to come on to talk about their perspectives. Yeah, I, thank you, Mike. I, I wanted to get back to a point that Joe just raised, which is this point about the expense of opening up in the wrong location. And it, it gets extremely expensive, of course, once you poured that concrete. And um, you know, there's, there's uh, people in the retail industry that worry about this all the time. And um, this is a quote from some uh, uh, a guy in the retail industry, Gary Graham, who's, who's managed a number of chains, as you see here, for In-N-Out Burgers and, and Taco Bell. And, and this is one of my favorite quotes about that particular problem. Um, he says, when you're looking at retail trains, five, five years from now, you are going to look at your portfolio of stores, and there'll be 25% that are making tons of money, 50% that are paying the bills, and 25% that you'll wish you'd never opened at all. And the really interesting part about his quote is the fact that he says, you know, the key to under, the key to all this is understanding the demographics and the site attributes. And that was really um, 
uh, that, that's a really interesting point. And obviously, it's important to retailers uh, to making sure that they open up in the right location. It's, it's also extremely important to the commercial real estate brokers who are selling that real estate to retailers to help uh, retailers open up in the, in the right location. But there's also a third element to this. Uh, there's the cities and the regions around the country, these economic development agencies that are trying to attract businesses to the right city, uh, to, to, to the right places in their city. So if you're looking at the challenges of economic development uh, and the challenges of cities, um, the kind of things that they worry about is they worry about, of course, their tax base. They want to make sure that they can not only attract businesses, but attract the right businesses to their community that are going to stay in their community. Uh, they need to understand their citizens' needs. They need to understand you know, what kind of businesses are people looking for in their city, what, what kind of businesses would be successful, and where are they losing business, perhaps, to some of the neighboring communities. And then there's a third element to, uh, to the problems uh, that they have, which is, is you know, the availability of staff to help answer those kind of questions. Of course, with today's tough economic times, they're very worried. You know, they, they don't have a lot of staff available, and, and, and it's not easy to, to help businesses. So they need tools uh, that can help prospective businesses help themselves. And so um, as part of the group that I work at at Esri, um, I work in a group that is focused on a product that solves those problems. And that, uh, that product we call business analysts. And business analysts is a solution that's actually a GIS solution uh, that we use for, uh, for optimizing decisions to help organizations optimize where they locate and where they market their products and services. And we created a particular version of this product, which is a pure online product. It's a web-based solution that runs in the cloud that we call business analysts online. And um, this Business Analysts Online product is a product that you can subscribe to. Uh, once you've got a subscription, you simply go to a web page, you log in, and you can do all of this wonderful analysis to evaluate locations. You can take a location, you can look at an area around that location, like drive time areas, as you see here. And you can get information about those areas. Um, you can get information about the kind of people that live there and their characteristics and their lifestyles. You can get information about businesses. You can get information about spending habits in this area uh, and what the potential is and what the supply and demand information is. And so this is a product that we've had for a number of years now. And uh, people um, love it. They use it. They use it in, in, in retail. They use it in commercial real estate. And they use it in economic development. But what was really interesting about this product is we found out that people were coming to us and saying, hey, we really like business analysts. We like business analysts online. But what we want to be able to do is put that same functionality into our own websites. And so um, we looked at that and we thought, well, an obvious thing to do then is to create an API so that then using that API, people can integrate that same kind of functionality into their own websites. And that was the genesis of Business Analysts Online API. It's an API that is hosted by ESRI. It gives you everything you need to get started. So there's all of the demographic information in there, um, reporting capabilities to give you nicely formatted reports about those demographics. Uh, there's trade area services, so you can compute drive time areas or rings around a particular point that you might have in mind. Uh, there's application templates, so if you're a developer, you can really develop stuff very, very quickly. And it comes bundled with all of the Esri online maps and imagery that you get from ArcGIS online, as well as the geocoding services to, to, to map addresses. So, so that was the genesis for uh, Business Alice Online, the API. And now we're seeing organizations starting to, uh, to take advantage of this, and it's organizations and cities and regions such as the greater New Orleans region uh, that is, is starting to take advantage of that. And, and uh, I hope you'll hear a lot about that on, on the talk today, and, and, and we'll be able to answer a lot of questions for you about it. Thanks, James. That was quite succinct and, and uh, very helpful as far as understanding what were the drivers for ESRI to come up with this API. Now, 
let's kind of go to the actual application of this technology and, and we're going to bring on Matt Ruckart and talk about what were some of the business challenges that the greater city of New Orleans faced. Matt, how are things today in New Orleans? Things are good down here. Uh, <clears throat> for the benefit of uh, for those who aren't directly involved in economic development, uh, I think I'll first kind of start off uh, talking a little bit about uh, what it is we actually do and how we're organized. Uh, <clears throat> so if you'll, what you'll see here is we are a uh, regional economic development group that represents uh, 10 parishes. Uh, that's what we call counties down here in Louisiana, uh, for, the <laughs> for those of you who aren't familiar. But each parish has an e their own economic development organization, and uh, we work with those organizations as our partners uh, to liaison between the state government, the federal government, and uh, other uh, public and private stakeholders uh, all, all around, uh, working in areas such as business development, policy, workforce, and re uh, research. Um, we do a lot of marketing, a lot of, uh, of communication work, uh, but at the end of the day, our main goal is to recruit businesses that are going to be productive uh, into the region. Uh, and so, so that's a little bit about what we do. Uh, wh what we ran into in, uh, in working through, through some things in, in the business development side is that when you mapped it out, we had one problem that kind of related uh, to a lot of other problems that we were we were finding in the in the process. Um, that the central theme is kind of lack of, of accessible and reliable data. Uh, and so, what was happening is, is when we were dealing with with our customers and our clients who were looking at trying to locate within the region. Um, as you saw on the last slide, we we're we're kind of coordinating between it, 10 to 14, depending on what you define as a partner organization, uh, groups. And, and so we were seeing a lot of inconsistent responses as far as data uh, representing what the, the regional uh, demographic info was, uh, which causes some problems. I mean, you obviously want to put on a, a good face and, and have a, a consistent response throughout uh, anything you're, you're submitting to your clients. Uh, it, it also caused a, a problem in staff capacity. We were looking at about uh, 16 hours uh, to turn around, uh, those are labor hours by the way, to, to turn around a, a response to a cu customer and we just found that that, that was not acceptable. Uh, we were putting too much of a strain on not only our organization but on our partner organizations to spend a lot of time, hands-on time, uh, finding some of this, uh, this data. It, it was very low tech, uh, which was the next point, and, and we kind of were in a situation where people would, would create one document, and then any time you needed to go back through, you, you would go to that original document and try to copy and paste uh, that da data. Uh, it could have been from a year ago, it could have been from two years ago. But very low-tech responses, uh, it, not an efficient way to, to do things, and uh, obviously it, it just is not the, uh, the way you want to be doing business. And, and because of that, we saw uh, frequent errors, uh, you know, people, uh, people citing uh, 2000 uh, data as 2008 data, uh, things like that as, as we went through. and. and it, it caused a lot of errors, and when you're dealing with people who are looking at putting millions of dollars in the ground, uh, you want to put on a good face and, and show no errors with consistent data. And, and so, as you can kind of see, this all relates to to back to the one central theme, which is the lack of easy to access and reliable data. Uh, and and we were able to to find a vendor, uh, MSF Global, and uh, to, to help solve some of these problems, so I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to uh, Marseus Fernandez now to uh, to talk a little bit about what they were uh, able to do to help us fix some of these problems. Hey Matt, thank you. That was great. Uh, and for those of you that are that have just joined us today, we're talking about how the Greater uh, New Orleans is stimulating the economy with geospatial apps. We just heard from Matt Rucker 
uh, who's the Vice President of Business Development, and, and prior to that we heard what were the drivers from an ESRI perspective to develop uh, this API. Now we're going to switch into hearing from Marceus Fernandez, who's the President and CEO of uh, MSF Global, to talk about what were the solution options and what was developed and implemented. But b before that, let me uh, hear your, uh, your cheerful voice, Marceus, and say hello to the audience. Hi, hello. Hello, everyone. Well, welcome. Welcome. So go ahead. Talk to us about what were some of the options, <clears throat> what was developed, what was implemented. Well, sure. Um, certainly. I think the, you know, just following up a little bit about on uh, Matt's comments, um, you know, when we met with GNO Inc., um, it was very, you know, very, very critical that we identify a, 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 a an option, uh, solution options that will allow us to be able to deliver uh, data and information in, in a very reliable way. Uh, one of the central issues that we, we, we looked at was what was a, how, how would we leverage the ESRI investment? Uh, looking at many of the partners uh, that GenoInc work with, um, there's a rich abundance of data uh, that was really available in the ESRI format. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was look at how we can leverage that information uh, to help them build a complete data set. Um, and then also, I think one of the biggest concerns was uh, in the post-Katrina uh, environment within the uh, Greater New Orleans region, um, being able to have a very accurate uh, depiction of demographics and markets and, uh, and, and projections uh, within the region was very important. And so we spent a considerable amount of time studying, uh, meeting with, uh, different vendors on their data product, uh, studying their methodologies, uh, as well as the, uh, their currency uh, and accuracy, and, and looking at all those products across the board um, to determine what was the, the, the best solution that would fit uh, and provide us some accurate and, and reliable uh, data and market products to uh, incorporate into the solution. The next bullet there, quicker, you know, entry to market is quicker. Uh, with a proven platform. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that the solution uh, that we were going to build off of was something that was proven, that was going to allow us to get up and running fairly quickly because as anyone knows, the longer it takes to get to market, uh, there are opportunity costs associated with that. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we were able to deliver uh, GNO Inc. something that was going to be able to get out to market fairly, fairly quickly. Like many um, organizations, especially in economic development, and unfortunately, uh, considering the economic uh, challenges that we as a country are facing and then uh, compounded by that, we as uh, the greater New Orleans region have faced, uh, reduced cost of entry was also uh, another factor. Um, you know, what can we do that was very, um, going back to my, my, my um, going forward to my, my next point, you know, how can we create a highly interactive Web 2.0 experience uh, that is attractive, that speaks to uh, the type of service that the Great New Orleans Inc. provides and the kind of branding and face that they want to have out to the public. How can we do that in a very cost-effective manner uh, and make it instantly usable? So we're looking for a solution that we could work with that we're ready to go, that we didn't have to spend a lot of time working with that particular solution to get it up and ready to go to market. Um, and then stability. Stability was very important. Uh, high availability, uh, this this service has to be ready, has to be on demand, and has to be there. So looking at a service level uh, agreement that will allow us to confidently say to our partner and our customer, hey, this product is going to be available, and it's going to be available to your uh, constituents and, uh, and consumers so that they could get the information that they need and, uh, and provide the... Uh, you know, the type of decision support required. And then the, the last bullet here is uh, something that was scalable uh, to advance functionality via uh, geo, traditional geoprocessing as well as service-oriented architectures. Uh, the key here is to leverage the enterprise, uh, leverage investments you've made, and also to be able to scale the solution as you find uh, new features, new functionality, new tools, and new requirements, uh, and, and to create a, a, an application and toolkit that's flexible to changes in, in that demand. And so those were some of the things that we looked at when we uh, made the determination on the type of solution we wanted to uh, build for GNOE.
So, Marseus, let's talk about how you customize this solution and what actually uh, was developed, and then we'll move into uh, the site intelligence tool. Sure. After having some time to work with, we, we were very engaged with GNO Inc. You know, one of the requirements was definitely looking, a customized look and feel. Uh, it's very important to a lot of economic development agencies to present a consistent brand. Uh, and so that was something that we understood, having had a lot of experience working with uh, local governments and agencies and, uh, and building customized sites. So uh, we, we looked to build something that was customized, uh, had a very intuitive design interface, uh, but also allowed for basic as well as advanced integration. So using a very uh, basic workflow, basic implementation uh, versus something that would be more advanced was something that, uh, that was considered something that we worked with GNO Inc. to develop. Part of delivering that customized look and feel as well as that uh, rich Web 2.0 experience, we we, we decided to leverage the ESRI uh, ArcGIS API for Flex. Um, and so using Flex, if anyone's who's familiar with the Adobe Flex uh, development environment, it's a very highly interactive, uh, what we call kind of like the rich internet uh, experience that it provides. And so uh, it allows us to do a lot of nice things in terms of uh, creating a really, um, you know, user, you know, advanced user experience. And then the product, uh, the products, and what we that we chose was the business analyst online API. Um, it offered a rich suite of tools that basically was geared toward uh, the traditional workflows that economic development agencies, as well as site selectors and, and real estate uh, commercial real estate marketers and so forth, would use. And so having an API that was already pretty much configured uh, to leverage and, 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 and expand that workflow uh, was very important. And so the BAO delivered that solution to us. Uh, and in addition to that, being able to also leverage other data holdings that, um, that were um, available uh, to be served and overlaid into, or should I say integrated with and overlaid into the uh, BAO API um, such as incentive zones, other economic uh, 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 development layers, such as uh, historic districts, and uh, things that normally site selectors use. So ArcGIS Server 9.3 uh, was very important in order to be able to deliver that custom content. And then, obviously, again, going back to getting up to the market quickly, not having many economic development agencies do not have uh, uh, rich base maps that are just lying around. Many do not have a lot of GIS experience in building uh, maps and, and base maps. So ArcGIS Align was very important to provide a rich base map uh, for which the BAO API would rest on. And then uh, to be able to create a, a data integration platform uh, using ArcSDE that would allow data to be seamlessly integrated into a spatial layer and then served up uh, through the platform. And so the last one I'll talk about as far as the solution component is the demographic and market data. Again, going back to reliable access to information, a survey of the uh, of the vendors and working with multiple uh, vendors on data products uh, suggested that to us um, that the ESRI economic development subscription uh, that provided a, a premium uh, list of data products and marketing products and reports uh, was the best available on the market, um, and especially when it came to accurately depicting post Katrina demographic and market conditions. And so. Uh, that became the solution uh, that we settled on in terms of the, uh, delivering the BAO um, um, customized application to GNO8. So, so let's take a look at the site intelligence tool, Marseilles. Yes, this is uh, the site intelligence tool that basically uh, provides a very, you know, three basic uh, functions in, in, in terms of workflow. The ability to create trade areas, uh, distant bring and economic and then drive time analysis. The the objective there is to be able to support uh, trade area analysis for economic development and site selectors so that they can understand the conditions around them, um, you know what market trends are there, and then being able to access reports that help them further analyze those market trends and conditions. Uh, a key component to that is being able to provided a very um, intuitive manner available commercial properties. So reducing the time and effort that it takes researching properties and then taking those from uh, other sources and then uh, utilizing those in various data sources and applications in order to generate 
uh, market information and demographics. What we've done in working with GNO Inc. and another local data provider is to push that data directly into the two so that the data is available <coughs> and could be utilized instantaneously. Uh, and, and we've worked on some automatic feeds and push using XML uh, so that it's more open source uh, in order to do that. And then the final product, uh, final part of the workflow is generating those demographic business and market reports. And so this is basically in, in a very, you know, brief format, uh, kind of supporting what we we consider to be that workflow of explore, discover, and decide. And so being able to get users the ability to move through the product that way. And then I think a key takeaway from this also is that that the product does is it supports geocentric workflow. Uh, so just take a look at this diagram. Uh, you know, we're we're taking your data, uh, property information, and other data sources that you that you may have, uh, and, and being able to geospatially enable that information, uh, combine that information with ESRI data, base maps, and even other custom task services that can be authored uh, through other um, products uh, such as ArcMap or other tools uh, that ESRI provides, and then have that information published directly to the web. And so what you're able to do is take all the back office things that usually happens uh, at someone's desktop or in the or you know just within the office, and then as you and then push that information out into the public so that it's consumable and available and enhances the uh, site selection uh, process. Excellent, Marseus. Now I want to move into talking about what were some of the results uh, from the Greater New Orleans. Uh, experience, some of the lessons learned. So let's bring back uh, Matt to join you, Marseille. So Matt, let's start with you. If you would talk about what were some of the results and lessons learned from, from this project. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> what you'll see on this slide is, is kind of a, a quick takeaway of what we found to be the most helpful. Uh, the, the first thing I would say is that we, we solved all of the issues I had talked about earlier, all of our challenges uh, were, were solved. And so I'm not going to run through all of these uh, point by point. But there's a few that I, I would like to talk about, which is uh, reduced labor hours to respond to customers. I, I mentioned earlier we, we were talking about a 16 hour, uh, 16 lab, labor hour response rate. And uh, we, we were able to cut that uh, in at least half. And uh, now, we are actually about to uh, unveil a templating system that that allow is going to allow us to to go ahead and reduce it to uh, to to about four is what we believe. So we'll be taking a 400 percent reduction in uh, labor hours uh, to respond to our customers, which is quite substantial uh, when everybody's doing less uh, or doing more with less, I should say. Uh, that's significant, and, and the way we were able to do that is. The site intelligence tool provides such a, a great templated, consistent response that uh, we were able to take that the way the information is is provided and and uh, the fact that it's it's all electronic data, and go ahead and, and pump that into a, a web-based response template. So uh, we'll be able to do everything online. Uh, you know, no paper, no co copying and pasting. Uh, no taking uh, flyers and, and maps from from different sources that look different. Uh, so we're going to increase our consistency and, and significantly reduce our labor hours required. Uh, the other thing that we found that I think is worth talking about is uh, reducing the amount of touches. Uh, in, anybody that's in sales, uh, regardless of whether you're in economic development or or not, knows that every time you touch the customer, it can be good and it can be bad. And so what we've been able to do with this tool is provide a way for the customers to help themselves uh, without a direct touch from us. So, so there's not a, as much of a chance of having the negative uh, outcome from a touch. Uh, they're able to log on, get exactly the information they need, produce reports in a user-friendly format. And so it's always, uh, from what we've heard anyway, it's it's always been a positive, uh, a positive interaction uh, with the website and, and they can get on late at night when somebody may not answer the phone. And, and it's done some of the other things, uh, providing consistency, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, it's also increased the information that, that our people have access to, uh, which is important. Uh, if somebody asks a question when you're on the phone, you can say, hang on, uh, log on to your web own website, uh, 
go ahead and, and get that information up while you're you're talking to them. And that was just something that was uh, impossible, you know, six, eight months ago. And, and the last thing that it's done is uh, that we weren't really expecting is it's been such a good tool uh, that it's, it's actually driven customers to our websites, our website, I should say. And that was that was something we thought it would be uh, a benefit for people that were already logging on to our website, but it's been such a, a hit that we've actually seen an increase in our uh, our daily hits uh, since the the tool has gone active, and uh, so so we feel like this is a, a real driving force behind uh, people actually coming to our website. Uh, so a, a little bit reverse of what we were expecting. So. Uh, so that's been a, a very, very interesting uh, take on that. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, Matt, because obviously the more customers you can drive to your website, the greater opportunity is that uh, it, it creates economic development opportunities, helps, helps your sales force. But I, of all the results here, the, my, my big takeaway is the lesson learned where you talked about reducing the amount of touches until the sale, and I, I, I get what you're saying. It can be both a good thing and a bad thing, and it sounds like you've, you've eliminated the potentially annoying touches to make the experience with the end user that much more rich. Is, is that a fair assumption? That's exactly right. Uh, I, and, and the negative touches aren't, I mean, nobody intends to have a negative touch. It, it never starts that way. But, but what we've seen and, and from talking to uh, key site selectors uh, about this is that if, if you don't have the information during the conversation you're having, it can be a negative touch. Uh, and, and so it, it's not something that's ever done intentionally, but it, it can be an, an unintentional negative. Great. Well, let's move on to uh, bring Marseilles back to talk about some of the lessons learned. And then I know we have uh, one more a discussion where we're going to talk about some future plans and uh, something interesting from uh, ESRI coming up, and then we're going to go into your question. So, Marcellus, why don't you uh, take a few moments and talk about some of the lessons learned uh, from from your perspective? Sure, no problem. Thanks, Mike. Um, I mean, basically, as you see in the slide here, um, the first bullet point: use reliable, credible resources. I think that was that's very important. I think that was important in many cases, in many respects, throughout this engagement. It was obviously very important for us to be able to recommend to the GNOE a credible resource and solution to help with the service, uh, put the service in, in the production. Uh, but then the byproduct of that is that they're now delivering a credible and reliable resource uh, to their constituents. And so uh, that's very important um, as we see, you know, the, the use of cloud services and cloud technology become more and more, um, you know, utilized uh, throughout as, as, a, as a preferred platform or a way to do business on, uh, via the web. Uh, being able to access these services were very important to us. Um, engaging the stakeholders early and often, um, that's very critical that you have that input early on in the process. Uh, and that kind of feeds into the third point here, which is continually, continually to involve towards perfection. In other words, this solution is something that's very scalable, uh, very customizable. Uh, so it's not always very, you know, you don't always have to get it all done the first time. Uh, it can be scaled up and, and, and customized uh, with very little effort in order to ensure that you're able to respond to demands and to changes in, 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 in the environment. Marseilles, if I could jump in here uh, on yeah. the first point, reliable and credible sources. Uh, uh, this was one of the things that was most important to me uh, and speaks very well of Esri. Uh, uh, from my prior experience in economic development, um, I, I knew firsthand there, there's only uh, a, a very select few providers that uh, site selection consultants uh, and businesses will really take as a credible resource. Uh, one of those is Esri, and, and so it was very important uh, when we were looking at uh, the potential to use this in the sense of economic development is that we we really leverage the reputation of a key key provider so that it it 's not a marketing ploy for us now to provide this data because this data is being provided by a very credible very reliable third party uh, entity and so to me that was one of the biggest 
uh, keys of this that, that really makes it work is, is that, uh, that credibility that, that Esri lends to the, to the process. Well, Matt, we really appreciate those comments. This is James here. I just wanted to chime in for a little bit. You know, as, for those of you that know Esri, you probably know us best as a software company. Uh, what a lot of you may not know is we are, in fact, a data company, at least for de demographic data. And the team that works on, on building this data, we, we try extremely hard to bring the most current, the most accurate, and most up-to-date data possible about demographics. Uh, to our users, and the team that works on this has actually been doing it for over 35 years, and uh, you know they even helped out the Census Bureau um, in 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 the early censuses back in the 70s, and have been working on this um, every year and and have focused on this all the time. So that's something we really uh, pride ourselves on. And uh, in the case of the New Orleans, in particular, when when Katrina happened, we actually sent out some staff to to uh, to the area to uh, do some uh, on the ground ground truthing surveys to make sure that our data was uh, was absolutely as accurate as we could possibly make it. So um, we appreciate your comments because um, that that really helps us. Well, I appreciate all three of your comments, and let's now move on to talk about some of the future plans. And Marseilles, why don't you come up first, and then we're going to come back uh, to James. Uh, who has some interesting uh, discussions around a new app. So, uh, Marseus, I'm going to bring your uh, particular slide up and uh, allow you to uh, move into that. Sure, Mike. Thanks for that. Um, in terms of our our experience with uh, business analysts, uh, both in, in terms of our general product uh, development process as well as the unique experience of working with Geno Inc. has brought us is that, um, you know, we feel that, this is a very, very, um, that this particular solution can create a lot of impact um, in terms of not just economic development, but other geospatial uh, applications and, and industries out there. Uh, so this particular slide just kind of speaks to a brief, um, you know, survey of some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, toward the future in terms of uh, leveraging BAO as a part of your enterprise is something I mentioned earlier. And I think that, you know, the, a lot of the work that we've done uh, with, with local governments and other economic development agencies, uh, what we've seen is that there's an ability to bring this information uh, into the enterprise and so that uh, whether it's, you know, looking at Gov 2.0 initiatives such as crime and public safety, code enforcement, issues of transparency, as well as accountability, to be, the ability to be able to uh, go through a trade area or a uh, workflow that allows you to identify an area where you want to see what impact that it has. You want to see what trends are there. Uh, if you want to actually uh, create a market leakage report to see if a uh, certain community or economic development initiatives has actually helped retain uh, economic uh, uh, you know, economic uh, prosperity within your a particular neighborhood or particular area in which it was affected. Um, the ability to then also start looking for toward uh, you know more collaboration and uh, and integration in terms of social media document management. So one of the things that we looked at was you know how do we start to make BAO and this this process a part of uh, the, the the business um, you know. Um, platform for agencies and looking at SharePoint as a preferred delivery mechanism for that, uh, SharePoint is growing in terms of uh, being one of the, you know, the fastest growing products uh, that Microsoft has, but also being very uniquely suited uh, to deliver these kinds of uh, services. And so looking at how do we pull, create that kind of back office utility that helps economic development agencies as well as other agencies, you know, work better, work smarter. Um, and, and to be able to collaborate and, and create the kind of efficiencies and, or, and returns on investment that, that they need in these economic times. Uh, and then <clears throat> lastly, you know, and this is where GIS and the ability of GIS comes full circle uh, in terms of advanced analysis, being able to, um, you know, grow the type of services and the type of solutions that you have in terms of advanced site and location modeling uh, three-dimensional modeling so that we're not just looking at uh, things always in 2D, but we're able to bring the 3D concept uh, in, 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 um, into the, um, the visualization, um, network analysis, looking at particular drive times, 
uh, time series analysis, we know that you know looking at GIS and space, and then uh, you know looking at space and time, uh, we can we can identify some new patterns. And so, uh, what we see is an opportunity to to expand upon this, so that we're we're not just talking about uh, just one particular part of the delivery mechanism, but we're looking at it as a comprehensive solution. Thanks, Marcias. James, you're up. Talk to us about this new app. So, well, one of the things, we've got this cloud-based API, the Business Analyst Online, the BAO API, and of course you can use it to power website applications such as our own Business Analyst Online web application and some great sites like the ones that are being created in Greater New Orleans. But Turns out you can also use it for other things, and you can use it for mobile applications, and we're actually working on that very hard as, as we speak here. Um, and we have a, an application that's going to be coming out on the iPhone very, very soon. We expect it to be uh, available in the App Store by the end of this month. And it's going to be BAO on the iPhone. And what this application will allow you to do is get the basic facts about any area, yeah, the area you're in or an area you want to type in and, and, and search on. It will allow you to compare locations, one location against another, so you can compare it to your best location, perhaps. And it allows you to uh, score locations to tell you whether or not a particular location uh, meets your specific requirements. And if you have a subscription to our online product, you'll also be able to log in, sign in using this application and get access to the full set of very detailed and very up-to-date demographic reports that we put into Business Alice. Uh, the basic app uh, that we're going to be making available in the App Store will be free. We are not going to be charging for this. So um, um, it's something that's going to be coming out, like I said, very soon. We hope at the end of this month. And uh, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, we're very excited about it. And um, we, think, uh, we think people will get a lot of use out of it. So that's what we're working on. We're taking BAO Mobile and uh, taking it to the iPhone. Well, I, I can tell you, James, uh, that's going to be on my list of the next, one of the next apps I put on my iPhone. So thank you very much for that update. We've got quite a few questions, and we're going to get to them in just a moment. Just to let you know uh, that there is a 30-day free trial that's available at this link here. Uh, you'll be receiving a copy of this in our follow-up email. And what we want to do now is to ask you for some input on our final poll today. And that basically is based on what you have learned today, how useful do you think these cloud-based services would be for your organization? Uh, just choose one. Uh, we'll keep the polls open for a little bit longer and then we'll share the results. And then we will let you know exactly how uh, everybody has voted. So it looks like uh, 35 or 80 percent of you think this will be very useful or useful. 4% uh, don't think it will be useful, 16% uh, aren't sure. So that is that is very, very helpful, and we appreciate that. And now we've got the opportunity to call back to our virtual panel, Joe and James and Marseus and Matt. I want to start with some questions, and the first one is from um, our audience is for you, James, and then Marseus. Obviously, this API is great for economic development. What are some other use cases for the BAO API that you can talk about? Yeah, I can maybe touch on that a little. I mean, obviously, it's used for economic development and for site analysis. It can also be used for marketing, target marketing, figuring out where your best customers are or where, where you can reach your best customers. And, you know, if you know a little bit about the audience and know a little about their characteristics, you can also use it to tune your message to that particular audience so you, so you know how to talk to them and increase your response rates. There are other areas in government where we see this information being used. We see it being used in public safety and urban planning, uh, really trying to understand the needs of the community. Um, you know, in the case of emergency preparedness, if there is an event in a particular area, what kind of people live there? Um, are they vulnerable? Are there a lot of old people there? Are there a lot of young people there? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So for common operating picture applications and the like, it's it's used. It's also been used in recruiting applications. So uh, figuring out, you know, where can I find the kind of people I'm looking for um, to recruit to my organization? Uh, we see we see use of business analysts and business analysts online for for those kind of applications, particularly at the federal government level. Um, 
uh, are starting to use that for, for recruiting purposes. So those are just some examples. The other folks here may, may have some others. Marseille, so Marseille, yeah. Do you want to add to that? you? Yeah, sure, sure. I'd love to jump in on that. Um, I, I would agree with everything that James said. I mean, I think that this, uh, this information, this kind of API could be used for a number of areas. Uh, just to touch on some, maybe some specific examples, for example, in public safety and crime. Uh, the ability to be able to understand who's affected by what certain crimes that are happening in certain areas, so the what and the where, you know, the what, the where, and the who, as I guess we say. Um, you know, I, I had a specific example in terms of uh, something that we were looking at in our office in terms of uh, looking at what the economic impact is in certain neighborhoods uh, that are, are, are adversely affected by certain crime that's happening there. I mentioned earlier about the market uh, leakage report, which is a report that you could uh, access through the BAO API uh, that would allow you to see what, how much of your business or a particular jurisdiction's business is actually, I should say business, but, uh, uh, but uh, purchasing power is actually happening in, in other areas. And so they're, they're, they're not capturing that sales tax. And so, you know, I think those are some critical areas that we could, we could see where BAO and, and that this type of information could be utilized to, to create a workflow to help address those issues. Uh, other areas that we see is uh, recovery and, re and, and reinvestment, uh, being able to understand specifically what are some of the, what impact are certain recovery initiatives ha having, uh, whether those are disaster uh, recovery or economic recovery as we've seen from the stimulus package. And so being able to combine uh, the specific project, projects along with the BO API and then being able to look at uh, demographic workforce information uh, and trends and to be able to analyze over time, you know, what impact have we had and then also being able to use uh, that information to support uh, not only, uh, the, you know, the current initiatives that are underway but even maybe expanding that initiative. And so I think, uh, you know, if by incorporating this into an organization workflow as part of its toolkit in a larger enterprise, I think we'll, you, know, you could see that this information could be used uh, in, in a number of different areas, and I think I've just touched on a few here. Thanks, Marcias. James, here's one from Kevin. Um, we just heard about the new BAO iPhone app. What about other platforms like the Droid? Are you developing for other mobile platforms as well? Well, that's certainly on our radar. We're keeping an eye on other platforms. You know, the Droid is, is getting more and more popular. The RIM BlackBerry, obviously, is, is very popular right now. Um, you know, the obvious place for us to launch an app initially was the iPhone because there's a lot of buzz around the iPhone and the iPad. And this app, by the way, will also run on the iPad. Um, but uh, we're keeping a very close watch on other platforms. Droid is certainly on our radar. Well, terrific. Folks, it looks like we're just about at the end of the webinar. So before we sign off, are there any uh, last uh, summary comments from uh, James or Marseilles or Matt? Yeah, I think there was one question that somebody raised about pricing for the API, and I just touch on that very briefly. Um, if you're looking at pricing for local government use and obviously economic development use, uh, the pricing for the API is based on the population of the community that you're serving. And it starts at a, around six and a half thousand dollars a year for a population of up to a hundred thousand, and that includes not only access to the API, but it, we also give you one seat access to uh, to the Business Analyst Online web application too. So, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions, or you may have questions, uh, more questions about pricing, and and certainly feel free to contact us if you go right. to that web address. Right, that address is there, and we have uh, unfortunately not been able to answer everyone's questions, but as I said at the beginning of today's webinar, a subject matter expert will get back to you. We really appreciate everybody taking the time to join us. And as I said, you'll be receiving a short survey in just a moment. We'd really appreciate you taking a couple minutes to fill it out. We value your time and your feedback, and it'll be very helpful for future webinars. Naturally, thanks go out to uh, Matt Rookard from uh, Greater New Orleans, Marseilles Fernandez, and of course, James Killick and, and the rest of the ESRI team for sponsoring today's webinar. And a special thanks to my colleague, Nora Parker, who's the Senior Managing Editor, for all the hard work she's done behind the scenes to make today possible. You'll get a copy of this webcast to download, and again, Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you on our next webinar in the Directions Media series, and be sure to tell a friend about Directions Media.
Bye for now and have a great rest of the week.